Uh, my name is Jay Xu, Director of the Asian Art Museum. Thank you for coming. This is going to be a very nice evening. I see my family, including my daughter, got to be a good evening if she's coming. <laughs> yeah, anyway, um, um, as you know that uh, we are about to open a major exhibition of Chinese calligraphy. And come to think of it, in the entire United States, the last time the calligraphy that was displayed as exhibition was 12 years ago. So it's not necessarily a subject that to say is it accessible or appealing, right? And that, otherwise there will not be more exhibitions. I think it, on the other hand, I think that the challenges have not been fully tapped. There's great potential to learning about calligraphy. That's why we call the exhibition out of character decoding Chinese calligraphy. Throughout the exhibition, there will be many access points through innovative installation, through technology, through contrast between the East and the West to engage you whether you are veteran, connoisseurs of Chinese calligraphy, or you're novice to it. There are many levels of understanding you can achieve. But first of all, we want to strike you with the visual monumentality, with the visual beauty. But as everything else, it always starts with quality. And we are very grateful that Jerry Young lends 40 masterpieces from his extensive collection for us to present this unprecedented exhibition that you either have seen or you are about to see. And this collection also inspired a contemporary response. And uh, the response was created by the artist Xu Bing who is seated next to Jerry. So there's a very interesting connection between the works in the galleries as well as the animation that is being created. So we hope that you all going to enjoy it many, many times and to learn and to uh, deepen our common appreciation. And um, as I will say that tomorrow is the first day that we're going to open to the public. And first of all, I would like to thank the Robert H. N. Ho Family Foundation for making presentations of this exhibition possible. I also would like to recognize curators of this exhibition, Michael Knight, our senior curator of Chinese art, and uh, Joseph Zhang, senior research fellow of Chinese painting and calligraphy, who are the two masterminds responsible for developing this exhibition. Is Michael and Joseph are with us? Would you please stand up? Good. And to also let you know, this exhibition will be richly accompanied by many educational programs, one of which, for example, one highlight is a decoding Chinese calligraphy symposium that will take place on Saturday, October 13th, starting at 10, 15 a.m. It is co-presented by the Society for Asian Art. And this symposium aims to deepen our understanding of calligraphy, revered as China's most important art form, of course. And tonight's conversation is made possible by WLS Spencer Foundation. And um, the formats really want to be a conversation. So I will try to do my best and encourage uh, uh, our stars to be more conversant with each other. But we also want you to get a chance to ask questions. In order to get your questions in time, that we will pass out in that card and with pencils. So you can write out your questions you may have already on your mind, or you could you know, come up with a question in the middle of the conversation that somehow inspire you. So uh, let me now formally introduce our two stars, Jerry Young and Xu Bing. Jerry Young is the entrepreneur, of course. He co-founded Yahoo Inc. in 1995 and served on the board of directors and as a key member of the executive management team until I need to find my notes. <laughs> that's, that's good enough, yeah. I think. <laughs> yeah, until 2012. While at Yahoo, he led a number of initiatives, including two of the biggest investments in the internet, Yahoo Japan and Alibaba Group. Young holds a, a bachelor's and a master's degrees in, ele in electrical engineering from Stanford University. He's widely recognized as a visionary and a pioneer in the internet technology sector. 
and was named one of the top 100 innovators in the world under the age of 35 by the MIT Technology Review in 1999. Jerry is currently on Stanford University Board of Trustees, where he is a vice chair. Jerry and his wife, Akiko Yamazaki, are well-known philanthropists who focus on higher education, conservation, and the arts. And Akiko is also the president of our foundation board. Now, about the artist Xi Bing. Xi Bing was born in Chongqing, China, but grew up in Beijing. During the final years of the Cultural Revolution, he was sent to the countryside to perform farm labor as an, quote, unquote, educated youth re-educated youth. He entered the Central Academy of Fine Arts in Beijing in 1977, where he studied and taught in the printing, in the printmaking department, receiving both his bachelor's and master's degrees there. In 1999, she'd been moved to the United States, eventually relocating to New York in 1992. His work has been subject of numerous solo and group exhibitions at museums spanning the globe and has been included in various art history textbooks. Actually, Columbia University's Department of Art History now officially have a standing uh, uh, graduate level course called Art of Xi Bing. In 1999, Xi Bing received a MacArthur Fellowship, which is other words known as, more popularly known as the MacArthur Genius Award and was awarded an honorary doctoral degree from Columbia University in 2010. He currently works uh, out of his studios in Beijing and in Brooklyn, and since January 2008, has served as the vice president of CAFA, which is Central Academy of Fine Arts Beijing, his alma mater. And as we all know, the shipping's work focuses on written language, and it be very, very innovative in terms of call out not only the essence of uh, writing in our human society, and particularly its value to Chinese culture, but also the visual power of the writing. So these are the introductions. And uh, let's proceed to with one question that may be uh, common to both, but with somewhat difference. First of all, you know, I'd like to ask both of you in that exchange among yourself, how you, what is your childhood experience of learning calligraphy? But Jerry, particularly, you know, a, a tech guy, you know, why calligraphy? You know, arguably the lowest form of uh, technology. And for Xi Bing, you grew up in sort of difficult times during China, and uh, why calligraphy somehow stayed on with you? So maybe we we'll start with Jerry. Sure. Thank, thank you, Jay. It's an honor to be here with, um, <coughs> with you all. I um, grew up in Taiwan in the late 70s, and, and I think um, most Chinese boys or kids back then, you have to learn calligraphy, and it was, um, it was pretty much a, a, it was not a really fun exercise because it was um, a lot of repetition and rote sort of memorization of things, and um, it wasn't really obvious why it was even important to have um, this kind of training. Um, and um, when I came to the States in the 80s, I really kind of left it all behind. I, I you know, got educated, um, had a, uh, more or less a, a, a career in technology and had nothing to do with sort of the, the arts. And, um, um, but I, I think that uh, exercise of having practiced calligraphy has always stayed with me. I, I, uh, certainly when we moved around or when we unpacked boxes and you see the the, the brush and the pa and the ink and um, occasionally would write something and just for fun on newspapers. So it did kind of stick in the back of my mind, but I think it wasn't until much later um, when um, calligraphy as an art form started to enter my life that I made the connection that, um, that, that calligraphy was something that um, I have practiced but also had a connection with it. And now, of course, the <laughs> the calligraphy you see um, as art form, especially the ones downstairs, they're, they're, um, they're, they're true high art forms uh, where obviously um, Chinese, the, the artists who, who made those pieces are the top of their craft. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm on the bottom of the pyramid if you want to think of it that way. But I, I do think it's, um, it, it, you call it low tech, Jay, but I do think it's interesting because I think even over the centuries as Chinese people used calligraphy and um, uh, brushes and painting and paper, 
uh, they try to maximize the technology, the, the, the details of how you make a good brush for a certain kind of painting or certain kind of paper. Um, it's actually quite advanced. It's just, I think, within the constraints of that technology, they did the best they can. I uh, totally agree. I, you know, in my own experience, I grew up also learning calligraphy as well, partly forced, but, but I never really got time around to re pick it up. So my father sometimes say, even though you're a museum director, you don't write well enough. <laughs> so Xu Bing, you know, what's your story? Okay, uh, thank you guys. Uh, thank you, uh, Jay. Gum while I was a child, um, we have a one hour a calligraphy class uh, each week in our school. 嗯，但是呢，那个呃，我我呢，那个在书法课和美术课呢，就是总是呃分数非常高。I oh, so always score very high in the calligraphy class or the art class。嗯，所以就对这两个课呢特别有兴趣。That I became very interested in these two classes。当然在家里呢，这个我我由于家里的那个父父亲呢。also, my father uh, at home required me to do a piece of uh, writing every day. At that time, I just want to have a really good handwriting. But I never connected the writing with calligraphy or calligraphic art. 但是现在呢，呃，我反过来想这种这种这个过程呢，呃，我觉得实际上呢，在中国呢，用这样的方法来训练一个孩子呢，实际上不仅仅是让他把字写好看。Now looking back to that process, um, I started to realize, um, the, the way that Chinese people educate the kids on calligraphy is not just to have them write well. 最主要的呢，还是希望这个孩子呢，按照传统的呃一种方式呢，呃，来对他进行一个制约和对他进行一个引导。But mainly they want to use this format to actually restrict the kids and also provide a guidance for them. Yeah. So such kind of training started with the childhood and then all the way till the Cultural Revolution while I was 12 years old. I started to realize calligraphy is actually very useful. So, so during the Cultural Revolution, there is a saying uh, saying that pick up your pen, use it as a uh, use it as a knife and a gun. So writing is really like a weapon. It becomes very enforceful. 嗯，所以呢，那个我当时我们家我父母就很倒霉，就成了黑帮了。但是我这个书法写得很好。My uh, parents are uh, a really misfortune happened to them, and they became the the kind of like the dark force. But um, I was excelling because my calligraphy was really good. 嗯，所以呢，我就呃变得还算，虽然我的家庭不好，但是我还算有用，因为我的书法好。所以呢，我也希望表现得很好，能够参加到革命之中。所以呢，我。So, um, even though I came from this really black or bad family, uh, my handwriting and my calligraphy is so good, so I was, um, I was able to participate in a lot of propaganda uh, efforts so I can write for them. Uh, and I try my best to behave well uh, so I can advance. Actually, actually uh, my handwriting, my calligraphy wasn't that great at the time, but after the Cultural Revolution, I became really good because the process is really training me. But still, uh, until then, I did not really treat uh, calligraphy as a form of art. 嗯，但是呢，从我做了那个什么新新英文书法以后呢，很多人呢让我。
给他们题字或者写字，那时候我才觉得我好像我的艺术跟书法有一些关系了。It's only after the um、uh, square word calligraphy or the new English calligraphy、um, artwork that I have done, so many people ask me to write for them or、um, to、uh, do the labeling for them.、Uh, I started to realize the calligraphy is so much useful and connected to the art form.、Um, before I ask our two stars next questions, let me take a poll. How many of you have seen the exhibition? Including shipping's animation, okay, good, and、um, you know all the forty pieces in downstairs. I dare say it is all Jerry's favorite. They're Jerry's babies, but you know you have favorite of the favorite. One of which is the piece that is on the screen, the earliest piece, 14th century, Lotus Sutra. This is, I believe, one of the、uh, the very favorites that、uh, Jerry has, and also happens to be. The piece that inspired Xu Bing's work. Xu Bing was given the opportunity to go through Jerry's collection, and he found his inspiration from that piece. So I'd like to ask both of them, what does this piece speak to you? And then、uh, why is this your favorite for Jerry among all the pieces? And、uh, Xu Bing, why do you find you're particularly inspired by it? And you can ask each other if、uh, you want. <laughs> okay. okay.、Um, Well, I, I think those of you who are able to see this piece, um, really, um, after a while, it starts to talk to you. And、um, I,、uh, I think、um, we we were able also to、um, blow it up in the in the north hallway downstairs. And when you see even the scene of blown up,、um, you can see the details. But、um, but the context is obviously、um, uh, this was written in 1315 by、uh, one of the most important artists of.、Um, The Yuan Dynasty, probably in, in the history of China, Zhao Mengfu, and he、um, wrote this when he was 61. And、um, so, first of all, I would, I, you know, I, I think to be able to have that kind of control of your brush when you're 61 is incredible. This piece is about 14,000 characters plus or minus in small standard script,、um, and and we certainly haven't found the mistake in it yet. And presumably, if he did make a mistake. Probably he didn't, but if he managed to, he would start over. So you don't want to、um, you don't want to mess this one up. And um, um, and then obviously he、um, wrote it this as a Lotus Sutra, which、um, uh, actually is is a very 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 long sutra. So this 14,000、um, section is the third section. There's actually seven sections of it. Um, and、um, and one other section is in the in a Beijing museum. So、um, so he wrote seven sections of something like this, similar length,、um, and and all this in the in the sort of the name of devotion and dedication. So the context behind this artwork was important for me, at least for,、uh, one of the reasons I like it because、um, it just goes to show that、uh, in creating art, it's not just how creative he was, which、um, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about because I think、um, the, the the creativity and the spontaneity and the and the live. And the fluidness is really what makes the calligraphy great, but the context of this guy writing probably you know a hundred thousand characters、um, for his friend or for for meditation for devotion、uh, is really significant. The other thing about this piece,、um, besides the calligraphy, and, and the calligraphy is the is the best part, but the, besides the calligraphy is where it's been.、Um, and I think Michael、uh, and Joseph did a great job in. Um, downstairs, when you go down there in in the brochure, and hopefully there's a brochure left <laughs> that keeps disappearing. <laughs> yeah, it's already been gone many times.、Um, that traces this this artwork from 1315 until present day, and、um, uh, it's been all over the place. It's been through fires. It's been through different collections.、Um, those four big red things you see up there are imperial seals in the in the in the、um, in the Qing Dynasty by、um, the Qianlong Emperor who.、Um, Made a habit of stamping big seals on beautiful artworks, which、um, I, I hope nobody does anymore. But、um, but 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 obviously, having been in the imperial collection, but also、um, then since left it and has gone through a very different history.、Um, again, Chinese calligraphy and paintings have this、um, unique characteristic of having collector seals and provenance and things like that. So it's been a wonderful history study on top of great calligraphy. So you know, these are the kinds of things that 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 probably spoke to me as a A geeky analytical person.、Yeah. I'll let I'll let Shubin talk about all the artistic merits. <laughs> you already mentioned quite a bit of artistic merits, the discipline, the consistency, and the, the just the accuracy of it. I think it's truly mind-boggling. 
By the way, uh, the piece is displayed in the first gallery, uh, the Lee Gallery, so it's uh, nearly entirely open up. You know, this is uh, what's so special about the show. We try to open all the scroll up, all the album entirely displayed, so you can really take in massivity as well as subtlety at the same time. So, okay. 呃，就Jerry的这个，他的刚才这个其实这个体会都是是很有意思的哈啊。So uh, it's uh, really interesting to hear Jerry's um uh, reaction to the work. 嗯，这个呃，实际上我对那个赵孟俯的那个兴趣呢，是从他的画开始的。Actually, uh, I became interested in Zhao Mengfu's work uh, started with his paintings. 嗯，就是这个。特别他那个雀华秋色图，嗯，我第一次看到的时候，我我真的很很震惊，就是他震惊是因为他，呃，你你不知道他是一种什么风格。Uh, especially, uh, I remember how shocked I was when I first saw his moonlighting painting. Um, you you kind of cannot tell what kind of style he is developing or he has developed. 嗯，但是那个呃，看到那个赵孟俯这个妙法莲花经呢，在这个Jerry的家里呢，第一次那么近的看那个赵。and I was equally shocked when I uh, first uh, saw Zhao Mengfu's calligraphy, this Lotus, uh, Lotus Sutra, at um, Jerry's home in such close distance. Because what is, what is fascinating to me about Zhang Mengfu's work is that you can't really articulate the style he has. So in, in comparison to all the collections uh, that Jerry has that exhibited in uh, this show, uh, actually, among them, Zhao Mengfu's work is the least one that really demonstrates a style. But then, if you really look at the, uh, the work, uh, every stroke, even if it's as tiny, as small it is, but every stroke is so accurate, um, and it's very well positioned, accurately positioned. And so the uniqueness about without a style of Zhao Mengfu's work actually is resulted um, from his education and his experience and the level of the education he has achieved. So if we look into Zhao Mengfu's life, uh, his whole life, we started to realize that he has always been living in this paradox, uh, a very conflicted sort of environment. So he has to kind of find a neutral ground uh, in order to uh, express himself. So his is very Okay, so his, uh, his work, so therefore we can tell that his work is actually um, very, uh, in a way, moist, uh, very uh, kind of like elegant, um, and then at the same time really sharp. Yeah, uh, very well disciplined. Uh, and kind of like um, um, uh, uh, a, a form of devotion, uh, a, a, a dedication, a strong form of dedication. And uh, very clean cut. Um, without a sharp edge. 
。对，这些东西呢，其实我我我最后觉得他的书法呢，真的他的艺术呢，特别体现中国人的特性。So Zhao Mengfu's work is really a great representation of the Chinese character or the Chinese people's character uh, and the personality. Yeah, uh, that's a really give me opportunity mm. to ask uh, mm. Xi Jinping the next mm. question. Well, his new work is titled "Character of Characters," and uh, your starting point being uh, Zhao Mengfu, and you think his style really conveys sort of the common character of Chinese. People, so uh, could you tell us what do you try to convey? What do you mean, character of characters, and what what's the story you would try to tell through uh, this animation? Uh. 这个这个这个动画片呢，我第一次做动画片，这个最后体会到的就是动画片实在太麻烦了啊。So, uh, this is my first animation. I have never done animation before. My, uh, my feeling about animation is that this is too hard to make. 嗯嗯。但是呢，我们曾经受过这个，呃，这个中国传统的这样的教育啊。But because of the traditional education that we had. 所以我们很有耐心把这个东西给做完。So we're very uh, patient uh, to finish this work. 嗯，这个作品呢，其实我呃很想通过这个从赵孟俯的这件作品引起来我们关于呃关于这个书法和中国人性格之间关系的呃。So I wanted to use uh, Zhao Mengfu's work as a point of departure, but um, to use the animation to talk about uh, Chinese calligraphy and uh, Chinese as a sort of its culture as a human being. So the character, the personality, um, the way we think, um, the, or the thinking logic behind it, and including our aesthetic. 嗯，我们的缺点和我们的优点都和我们的书法的传统和文化一定是有关系的。Um, our Advantages and disadvantages are so closely connected to our culture. Mm. In particular calligraphy. Yeah. Oh, uh, 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 yeah. OK. 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 书写和这个记忆，这些这些文字。So calligraphy uh, has um, been going on for thousands of years, and everybody has to take a lot of time to memorize to practice. 嗯，我觉得是受接受教育的人。Uh, the the people who are accepting the education. 对，嗯，所以这个呢，一定是会对，呃。So it definitely has a profound impact on uh, the way we think and um, our personality. So in this film, we have to look at many of the pages that are talking about these things. So many chapters, if you look at the animation, it really talks about um, these kind of impact um, bit by bit. So we have to so a lot of ways that we actually use, even including Chinese ourselves, don't really realize it. 对，就像中国今天为什么是这个样子，呃，西方人甚至中国人自己都不是很清楚。So why China is like what it is today, um, like the Westerners or even the Chinese themselves is not very clear about it. 嗯，我是觉得呢。它有很多的原因，但是其中一定有一个很主要的原因，是因为，呃，汉字。There are many reasons, but one of the main one uh, I feel is really about um, the character of the Han, uh, the Han character. 嗯，和我们的书法。And our calligraphy. Mm -hmm. Good. Um, can, I, can I ask him a quick question? Please. Okay. So. When, when you saw the, the Zhang Mengfu the first time in our house, you already had this idea of Chinese character relating to the Chinese culture and how Chinese as a country and, and, a, and a group of people who understand the language. But then, um, and then uh, when I saw you earlier this year in Beijing, you said that you 
you had a, some idea and then you stopped and then you changed the idea because it wasn't working. Can you, I don't remember exactly what was the first idea and the second idea, but maybe you can explain your thought process when you, the, 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 the idea changed, I think, a little bit. Uh, 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 其实给我印象很深的过去的这种，这个这个这个，比如说社会主义时期的这样的一种要求中，最后这种整齐和这种没有个性，呃，我从赵孟頫这个书法中看到了。So the I still remember uh, the first time when I saw the work in your house. Um, uh, the the work was the the work seems too tidy and too disciplined to me, which reminded me of uh, the way um, in the everyday life in China, the parade or the group exercise. Um, it's kind of like the socialist quest to eliminate all the personalities. So that was my initial impression. Mm. But later, when I was uh, finishing the work, uh, we don't have this component. Uh, so why, why, not, why not that component? Uh, so I think such uh, correlation might be a little bit too artificial, um, too much on the surface. Um, I think Xu Bing made a very good point. Uh, on the other hand, the calligraphy is also a format that a group of people, a group of very different individuals, sort of can communicate. Actually, in the exhibition, there's another piece that, uh, and uh, among Jerry's favorite, it shows 30, uh, 13 masters handwriting. And uh, Jerry would even call it social networking. So maybe, Jerry, you can amplify. What do you mean? Yeah, I, I don't, uh, yeah, this is the one in the second gallery. What's the gallery called, the Hambrick? Uh, or Hambrick, Hambrick yeah. yeah. And when you first walk in, you'll see this piece. I think this is in uh, 1500 or so, so it's fi 500 years ago. And um, I call it sort of the original social network because uh, supposedly they were um, all contemporaries, and, and it's not clear whether they wrote it within a span of days, weeks, or even months, or, or maybe a couple years, but um, they all took a theme, and uh, for whatever reason, they decided to do um, sort of a, a riverboat scene, theme, um, and one after the other would come up with poems and different style calligraphy, and, um, and they would kind of um, try to one, maybe it was one up each other or just try to differentiate with each other. So, um, so it is a, a quite an interesting um, way of doing um, some sort of a, a memory or a, a piece, uh, a, a, almost a collaborative uh, effort. Um, and that, that I think is, um, it, and it's a common format in Chinese calligraphy. I mean, uh, people who end up gathering what do create these things. So it is quite unique. Um, and I think that um, even, even now, um, I think we, we go back and look at these um, types of calligraphies and recognize that um, uh, you know there is no one individual style that dominated a certain time, even though big stylistic changes over the 500 years. I mean, if you start from that first um, Zhao Mengfu that, that we've been talking about with its regularity and strictness and elegance and sort of discipline, and you end up in the, um, uh, the Osher downstairs below this hallway, you'll see some really wild and crazy stuff. So over the, over the 500 years of the history that we've kind of put together here, you'll see just tremendous diversity and, um, and style changes, both, um, um, both in form and in format and in script. So hopefully that's something that you, um, you can take away from the exhibition. So I feel, you know, the consistency and all the commonality versus the individuality is a constant theme in Chinese calligraphic expression. It's, it, and even within the one same uh, 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 format, you know, which is very fixed, that how you can be creative, 
living within the constraints. I think that is always the tension. I think this is uh, something that constantly underlining the creation of Chinese calligraphy. So um, one thing I'd like to uh, maybe ask Xu Ping and uh, can uh, Jerry maybe can respond to that as well, is that I feel Xu Ping, your work is very uh, focused on symbols, writing as a symbols. And you see symbols in landscape. When you see, for example, paintings, you often in the case see symbols and then you express them either through abstracted form or you know, reduce them into uh, uh, signs. So can you tell us about you know, how does that mean to you? And it just reminds me, in the computer, you, know, you have codes, right? This kind of uh, codes and symbols as well. So maybe Shipping, you can tell us first. There's one characteristic uh, in the Chinese culture that is very important to me. Um, so uh, the symbols or symbolizing uh, in the Chinese culture uh, and the Chinese tradition uh, is something very strong, uh, pervasive. So the pictograph and also the pronunciation uh, of the Chinese language um, is closely correlated. Okay, because the Chinese uh, character's pronunciation is, mo is based on monotone, so the Chinese language was able to continue to use the monotone. Monosyllabic. Monothenic. Monothenic um, correspond to the pictograph and then continue to pass it on. For generations. Uh, uh, so the Chinese language is Many language actually all started with pictograph, but because the pronunciation is not monothenic, it's actually synthesized. Yeah. Synthesized yeah. pronunciation, yeah. so that um, it later on all become spelling or uh, in Chinese it's pinyin. Um, they were, yeah, so they were able to move away from pictograph or not able to keep it. So fundamentally, um, the Chinese language uh, has a strong component of uh, symbolism. So calligraphy, in a way, is really sort of like uh, a duplicate or replica um, that we practice every day. So in Chinese thought, and So in the way, uh, in the Chinese way of thinking, um, there's a lot of emphasis on tidiness and also um, parallel. Yeah, parallel. So tidiness and also parallels are a kind of symbol as well. So the Chinese people really like to use the four letter words proverb um, to uh, conceptualize or encompass a very complicated story or a concept. Including Chinese uh, theater, Chinese drama, um, or um, Chinese paintings, uh, it's full of symbols. Um, a drama was full of all different kinds of symbols. Uh, such as the role in the uh, 
Beijing Opera. Um, it includes uh, the old man, um, the young woman, the old lady, um, etc. Yeah. So um, to express someone despising another person, he must use the way of, way, uh, of flipping the flea, uh, mm -hmm. sleep. 包括唱腔,包括他的鼓点都是非常的节奏化和符号化的。Including the singing tone and also uh, the drum tone, uh, it all kind of reflecting such symbolizing. 所以呢,比如我后来做了一件作品,刚才那个这个mentioned,就是叫Book from the Ground,实际上呢就是用 今天的我在电脑上出现的在各个公共场所出现的这些公共符号和icon和标识写出来的 So um, the one of the previous work that Jay just now mentioned, the book from the ground, is um, the symbols, icons, logos that I have collected um, from all the public spaces um, um, on symbolizing and labeling 那个作品其实是非常超文化的或者说非常年轻的但实际上呢这个真正的灵感的来源呢其实来自于中国的象形文字的传统So that work might seem very young, might seem kind of surpassing culture but really the inspiration come from the pictograph of Chinese language Jerry, when you look at the calligraphy, do you see symbols, size? So they're relatable at all to computer <laughs> software language? Well, I, 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 um, I, I really ad admire Shibin because I, I f at first I thought he was an artist, and um, the more I got to know him, the more we discussed. Um, I, I really think of, uh, obviously I think you're, you're a, a linguist in, in the sense of understanding languages and symbols, um, but your brain also is almost, um, is more like a computer scientist, I mean it's more um, <laughs> very logical, very symbolic, and very, um, uh, I remember we, you, uh, you were teaching me how to read your book from the ground and, um, and, and it's a series of symbols, that, like he said, publicly available symbols, whether it's a bathroom sign or a smiley face, a emoticon, you know. He takes in modern, these modern symbols that are almost universal, it's like the universal language, and he's, he's creating a story. Um, and I can't but help trying to you know, write a com software compiler to, to, to translate it into English, because I, I think it's almost like a software program. So, um, so it's really interesting to see um, an artist uh, that is so um, creative, but at the same time so logical. Uh, and maybe this is all that Chinese training you had. So um, <laughs> I, I, I think one of, the, um, one of the interesting things about Chinese calligraphy and, and software, which I'm sure will bore if it weren't boring half of you, the, this would definitely bore the other half of you, is, um, is that, you know, the Chinese calligraphy um, does start with, you know, brutally repetitive foundation, right? I mean, it's, it's, it's writing the same horizontal line time after time until you get it right, and the whole vertical line, right? And so, um, so the foundation is, you, you have to have the foundation in order to, to get creative. You can't just pick up a pen and start trying to get creative. I mean, we can today, but in the back in the day, that you can't do that. Um, and I think it's a similar for designing great software and great, probably technology, hardware as well. Your foundation has to be so solid and so great. Um, your code has to be so efficient. You have to really have figured out the most efficient way of accomplishing something, and then you allow it to be creative or scale or. Um, so it, it is very similar in defining the constraints of foundation and the, and the most basic, and that basic training is painful. And, um, and to be able to express creativity and innovation, I think, um, I don't know, maybe that's too far of a stretch, but that's, that's certainly what I observe from looking at the calligraphy. Well, I can even push it a further a stretch because I can think, I can officially declare Chinese invented software code writing based on your <laughs> Anyway, let's change this, uh, the direction a little bit. You know, we're talking about you know, Chinese language being monosyllabic, and there's very intimate correspondence to the characters with the sound and such leading to the particular way of thinking, particular way of doing things. But nevertheless, in the third gallery, in the largest OSHA gallery, we display the three um, Western modernists, Bryce Martin, Franz Klein, and also Mark Toby. And uh, they are displayed in the same room of, uh, with one piece that is monumental. So tall that our ceiling cannot you know, take care of it. So we have to sort of uh, 
uh, uh, installed in such a way the top part without writing is curved up. It's very beautifully installed. You, and it's a monumental, very striking. And this is also, again, another piece that uh, Jerry uh, uh, likes very strongly. So Jerry, what do you think of the juxtaposition? What, I mean, what does it just well, trying to do here? I, I think again, it's sort of a um, um, the, the the creative of efforts of the of the curators and Michael, and in collaboration with SF MoMA to borrow the three modern pieces here. But the idea is that, and and, and you know, as much as we talked about the Chinese language in this talk so far, um, the hope is that you w can walk through the galleries and you don't have to understand a single word of Chinese or a single character, and you can appreciate. Um, the beauty. Part of it is through all that training that, that you, you can see the power and expressiveness of a brush on um, paper or on silk. But part of it is that I think it just graphically, um, we, the curators and the, and the museum and the staff, has really tried to make this installation as part of the artistic presentation of this wonderful art form. And um, so hopefully you can see that. But I think with, with response to your specific reference of the Zhang Rei Tu that's downstairs um, directly below us, um, it's massive. It's, uh, um, it's characters that are, 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 you know, well, much bigger than our heads, um, written on, on brushes that are probably this thick. And, and from 20 feet away, you, you, you can read it if you understand Chinese. But what I would encourage people to do is to go up to it, maybe five, three, or four feet from it. And when you look at these characters, the, 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 the meaning of that word, that character, is lost. You're seeing a graphical form, not unlike that Toby that's right next to it. Um, so there's a, it's a sense of abstraction when you see characters that big and that large and that expressive. Um, and you, you hopefully it will hit you just like it's hit us, which is, um, you know, you go wow from afar and then you go wow when you're close and the, and the wows are different. Great. Uh, Shipping, um, Jerry has had an opportunity to, uh, to ask your questions and uh, to talk about how he feels about uh, uh, your work. Do you have a question for Jerry? Yeah, of course. Yeah. 实际上，对我其实过去问过他，但是好像他没有很很很很清楚的回答我啊。I tried to ask him uh, some uh, ask Jerry some questions, but he didn't answer me clearly. Yeah.对，今天当着当众当众还要让他回答。So uh, <laughs> <laughs> now I'm trying to do it uh, in front of everyone. Yeah.其实，其实，嗯，其实我很想从他身上了解的是什么呢？就是说，呃，因为他。在这个这个这个，就是这个当代的这个科技哈和这个数字这个时代，它其实做了非常非常重要、非常了不起的事情。嗯，我觉得就是他们做的事情呢，其实可以代表这个时代的一个最高的一个文明水准了。说实在的，
Um, they're, they're, they're very different activities on the surface, um, but maybe I can try to explain it in the context of um, creating a company and creating a product or creating a, 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 a something that people have never created before in software or in the internet. Um, and collecting and putting together the collection. Um, and I've used this metaphor before because I think they are really um, just journeys. They're, they're, they're um, a process in which you go through with a goal and a vision in mind, but you may not know how to get there. And whether it's um, building a, a software product or whether it's forming a collection, um, the, the journey to me was probably um, what I focus on more than, almost more than necessarily where we ended up. And, um, and along that journey, I, I think as you said, um, uh, these are not single person efforts. In fact, um, quite the opposite, even with collecting art, the vast network of people, the collaboration, the kinds of um, ups and downs and managing through uh, different ways of understanding and appreciating um, really requires a team effort and, um, and, and, and as exemplified by this, this exhibition, I mean, it's incredible how many people get involved in doing something like this. But, um, but it's, it's just as true um, with, with building a great company or building a great product that um, you really have to be able to orchestrate a team. And so um, maybe the, the, the joy and the similarity and the pleasure that I derive from um, building great things versus collecting great things is that you are able to touch some of the best people in the world in their field, whether it's the arts on the one hand and technology on the other. Uh, great. Um, I have uh, two uh, more questions, and then we'll open up the floor. So I was calling uh, my colleague to collect questions that you may have. So if you have not already written down, do so quickly. And one uh, uh, continue to talk about uh, Jerry is that you know, um, Jerry, I understand you collect other forms of art as well, and uh, in Chinese art as well as beyond China, and, uh, but somehow calligraphy is your focus. And uh, well, this focus, could you tell us a little bit more about, you know, furthermore amplify why this focus, why calligraphy speaks to you so strongly more than anything else? or? When you talk about journey, will this journey take you to somewhere else that you may change the direction? I I I think that um, um, there's there is a a sense of um, and and this is I think part of why we're I'm so excited about the exhibition here is that um, there's a sense of discovery when you open up a great calligraphy, and I know it's probably the most boring thing. <laughs> Certainly, look, when I first started collecting the calligraphy, it wasn't a very popular, and, and um, when we even talked about exhibiting it in museums, uh, when Michael and, and Joseph came to me and talked about picking some pieces, we all understood that calligraphy is a very difficult subject. I mean, it's probably one of the most difficult subjects to show, but I wanted, um, I, I, I wanted to be able to create an environment where people can um, uh, given the difficult, difficult subject matter, be able to actually enjoy the beauty of it. So figure out how to way to abstract all the, all the barriers, but really just highlight the great piece, uh, the great qualities of why the pieces are great. So that's, um, that's the, that's why there's a maybe I'm sort of stubborn and, and kind of um, uh, you know I, I like things that are very hard to do, but um, but to to really collect calligraphy well means that you have to understand it. You have to go through layers of. Uh, you know, is it is it good? Is it bad? Is it real? Is it fake? Is it um, and 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 to understand all that it requires a lot of studying, a lot of people helping you, um, and I think that's part of the fun. You know, that the fun is is to be able to appreciate it analytically, and to appreciate it artistically. And um, um, a lot of times, you know, things that you look and it's beautiful. Um, it, you know, it doesn't require a lot of analytics. Um, and, and calligraphy, you just also have to be also very analytical because it's it's like solving a puzzle or sometimes to trying to figure out something about that. So, um, so 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 the fact that it is an analytical um, art as well as a beautiful art form, in that I think it's a very difficult art form to explain to a Western audience. And, and this is why um, we're 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 happy to do it here in San Francisco. And this exhibition is going to travel to New York in 2014 at the Metropolitan Museum, um, and we're hoping that you know the American audience, the Western audience, um, can can see this as a art form 
um, that um, that that in its in its best sense, and some of the best works are, are around here, um, represents Chinese culture. Um, but let's not forget. I mean, uh, calligraphy is written every day. I mean, you you know, you can go to Chinatown today, and people are still writing it, and for holidays, and for New Year's, and for family gatherings. So this is very much a, a living, practicing art, and I think it's not something that is so elitist, and you can't touch it. Um, and so that's why I think it has a connective, connective quality about it. Um, and hopefully, that's something that you'll you'll experience. Terrific. Um, the the question that I have on my mind for shipping uh, is somewhat different, you know, Chinese contemporary art is very vibrant, among the most dynamic nowadays, and uh, all range of subjects, often the case with very strong, shocking style, almost bombastic. Xi Jinping almost seemed to be go the other direction. He get more deeper into the cultural roots, not only China, but as he pointed out, uh, the science everywhere in the universe, like uh, the bathroom science and uh, computer science. So you really get into sort of the fundamental building blocks of uh, human communications. So how does Xi Jinping, I like to ask him is that he thinks is the art in the context of this very, very dynamic, exciting, sometimes schizophrenic scenes of contemporary art in China. So this is really a big subject to talk about the Chinese contemporary art. In three minutes. Something wrong? So it is indeed very active in terms of Chinese contemporary art. Because um, I think it's is because China as a country has becoming very active. So China received a lot more attention than before. And accordingly, this benefits the Chinese contemporary art. So more attention is getting, uh, the more stimulating it is for the um, vibrancy of the Chinese contemporary art. But in my opinion, I think the Chinese contemporary art was uh, a lot of people uh, paying attention to the Chinese contemporary art is because they want to um, understand China through the contemporary art, uh, specifically in some very sensitive areas. Uh, but actually, uh, I think there is a, a little bit, uh, there's some misunderstanding from the Chinese contemporary artist side that they, they thought that they got um, the attention because of their work. Uh, but actually, uh, I think um, but to me, uh, the reason why they got this kind of attention is because through the work, it's, um, it's a reflection of the uh, some uh, Chinese landscape. Uh, the information about China and also the sort of like a view or landscape about China. But I feel like what is really lacking in the Chinese contemporary art is um, the, um, the artistic language. Um, uh, there's lack of new sort of indication or hint. Uh, 
缺少在艺术语言上的贡献， yeah, 或者艺术新的艺术语言上的提示和贡献。Yeah. Uh, lack of the contribution of the、um, new aesthetic、uh, language or the artistic language. 嗯，当然这里有很多很复杂的问题。And of course, the reason is quite complex. 嗯，但是不管怎么样呢，中国呢，其实确实是一个非常具有试验性的国家。Regardless, China as a country is、uh, really a country of exper experimentation. 对，呃，是一个在对焦的国国家。Uh, it is a country that is in focusing. 呃，这个这焦距，如果慢慢慢慢能够对清楚呢，呃，中国的当代艺术或者说中国的艺术呢，也会，呃，越来越越来越成熟和越来越有意思。So when it can really get focused, then the Chinese contemporary art will be also in focus as well,、uh, and it will become a lot more interesting.、Yeah. We have very interesting questions here. The first is a straightforward, but I think it also、um, can enable us to get more into Jerry's mind. Is that、uh, Jerry? The question is that uh, uh, you have a student name, Chinese called Guan Yuan San Zhuang.、Uh, what does it mean, and how do you translate it into English?、Um, well. Uh, we do have a studio name, and apparently that's what you do when you have a collection, I guess. And、um, uh, maybe you should explain, since you came up with it. <laughs> uh, you know, it is a、um, Chinese custom, and、uh, you never put your own personal name on a title or exhibition. That is simply not elegant and、uh, too immodest. So, Guan Yuan, which Uh, uh, gazing afar, San Zhuang means mountain villa. So literally, it means the mountain villa for gazing afar. And、uh, Jerry's Chinese name, Zi Yuan, means the reaching afar. So gazing afar and reaching afar are related. You have to be able to see afar before you can reach afar. I think he is capable of doing both. And I think his、uh, home is also beautifully located on a hill. So you know, like a Elegant traditional mountain villa. So of course, many of us come up with、uh, proposals. So where are the people who propose? He's the people, person who is spoke. So he liked the title, and、uh, that's why it ends on the Chinese catalog. You know, the catalog and the Chinese title as well as in the exhibition. So, shipping、um, for you. The question is that、uh, your most famous work probably is the book from Sky, Tian Su. And so, question is, does that have political implications? Is it has political meanings in your work? 呃，其实它没有很明确的政治含义了啊。There's not a clear political intention、um, or meaning behind the book from the sky. 呃，如果它是一个政治的作品呢，它就不会这么有名。If it is a political work, it actually won't get as famous. 我说在艺术上啊。Uh, I mean, I mean artistically. 对，嗯，呃，对，其实其实其实其实就是这样了啊。Uh, I, I think well, that's it. The the next question is also written in Chinese. I'm going to translate. I think it's a very relevant que question. Is that、um, I'm studying、uh, graphic design in a San Francisco art school, but when I invited one of、uh, My classmate to join me for this lecture. His reaction was, "I don't like Chinese culture." And、uh, understanding and seeing what China is, the current condition in China, make me feel that I don't have good feeling for traditional Chinese culture. So、um, I would like to ask our speakers, how do you convince him? And、uh, what do you want to say to him? <laughs> I'm not going to make it easy for you guys. <laughs> I see. Well, I, I I think it's convince. It's hard to convince anybody that that won't that refuses to to experience. And um, um, I I I don't think everything is perfect about Chinese culture, but I think it's a culture that a billion one and counting people. 
have, you know, in the diaspora have some aspect and, and connection to it. So, um, I, I, you know, my, 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 as I said earlier, I think being able to um, walk into one of these galleries and see some of these things, and if it touches you in a way that you haven't been connected to before, then we've done something. And um, if you don't even want to come, then um, I, I, it's hard to help people who don't want to be helped. <laughs> <笑>没有我我我我我对我我我当然是觉得呃我自己的创作和我的艺术实际上虽然我在那个呃西方工作了有十八年啊但是我最后体会到的呃还是什么就是说真正对我有帮助的呢或者说我这个人根深蒂固
15 years ago versus the taste I have now is, is probably very different. So as my taste and, um, uh, um, and my perspective changes, I think the collection will change. Great. Uh, shipping question for you is, uh, do Chinese and the Western audiences respond differently to your works? Uh, Fundamentally and ultimately, it's not too different. Now, that's a question I think is for both of you. And uh, how would you suggest that a middle aged adult begin to learn this craft? <laughs> You're just like you're just like a lot of us. Uh, and, um, um, I, 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 you know, I, I met a um, uh, a Caucasian lady uh, not too long ago who um, says that she just started to to, to write calligraphy, uh, Chinese calligraphy. Um, she, she she has no idea what she's writing, um, but just she loved the the process of having the brush and the ink and the, and the and the and the tactile sensation of having that on paper. Um, and um, it, it's it's a wonderful form of of creating something, and you can experiment with your brush and wrist and movements. It's a uh, it's quite neat, and and um, I, I think she's not alone. I, I know of another group in in Switzerland or something. I heard that um, um, is a group of um, uh, 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 um, later than middle aged, um, uh, elder more elderly people that basically meet every day and do it, and and they have no idea what they're writing, but it's a great um, it's a great form of. Um, artistic expression. So, um, you know, look, I, I, even as a child, we had no idea what we're writing. So this is not something that is to, to laugh upon. I think actually calligraphy is um, trained through copying models and copying books. And um, um, you, 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 your, your job in the beginning is to imitate the best. If you can copy the best, then you are allowed then to, to create something of your own. And I think uh, for all of us, if we can take a great example and just try to copy it, uh, that's, that's how you start. This is a very difficult question to answer. Everybody has very different experience and everybody has very different um, a channel of uh, having gain to gain access to it. But as a so for a middle-aged person, they already have a lots of uh, already accumulated lots of um, uh, life experience. I actually think uh, calligraphy is a is a great way of art form to start. For me, the most important thing about calligraphy is it provided a channel for you to communicate with the nature. This is the most meaningful and interesting part. So the most intricate fun about uh, Chinese calligraphy is um, it's about intertwining the space between the ink, the water, and then uh, the space of the ink and water getting into the space of paper and then letting the nature to complete the work. Um, a good calligraphy or a, a good calligrapher or artist um, in Chinese culture, they will always know how to leave a space for the nature to take over and to help them finish the work. 
的一个一个一个一个高的境界的这个所在。So that is kind of like the、uh, miraculous factor of calligraphy. 就是你必须懂得和自然配合。You need to know how、uh, to communicate and、um, cooperate with the nature. I think this is a wonderful high note for us to end tonight's program on. So yes, big round of applause for our stars. And、uh, and once again, thanks to the Spencer Foundation, which is a, a sponsor this evening. Just as a concluding thought, you know, I both said Jerry and、uh, she been pointed out, it's a very personal journey. Not only the calligraphy, not only the creativity, or the ad, also viewing exhibition is a very personal journey. So I hope that you will. Have your own journey and experience, and hopefully inspiration by going through the exhibition, out of character, decoding Chinese calligraphy. So let's see what you can get out of the character. Thank you very much. Good night.